What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Harvey Freebird channel. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. And look, let's just go ahead and smash that like button real quick because you know I'm not putting out any videos that you guys don't like. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Y'all enjoy it. What's up, everybody? So I decided to go to Arizona for direct D's court date and show support because I didn't agree what they were doing to him on Wednesday, June the 21st, 2023. He had two court dates. One was in Tempe and the other one was in Mesa. This is actually B-roll footage of us walking to the courthouse in Tempe. But the audio that you're going to be hearing is going to be the audio from inside the courtroom in Judge Nazi Schumacher's courtroom and he did threaten everybody in the courtroom don't you dare record bad things are going to happen there will be consequences and repercussions nobody listened to schumacher i think everybody in the courtroom was recording and anyways here's the audio of him acting like a nazi and stomping all over direct d civil rights and i know most of you know all the context leading up to this court date but if you don't i'm gonna put a video link to lackluster's video that he recently did that explains the whole situation very well you guys enjoy it first of all you can only record you can only record the video if it's been specifically approved by the court under 1.2.1c2 talks about recording or photographing somebody outside the courtroom it says in areas of a courthouse other than courtrooms no one may photograph or record an individual without that individual's express consent mr rock it's been brought to my attention that while you were in the mason city courthouse you personally recorded a conversation with an attorney you yourself did you videotaped that person against that person's will or knowledge you did not let them know that you were doing so you knowingly and intentionally violated this rule even though you know the rule you you, you did so so for that reason mr ruff you are no longer permitted to record uh, under under section 122 okay so i'm asking you to shut up your recording device what recording device are you talking I, about mr ruff i'm not i'm not asking you to um, tell me which recording device. I'm just saying you're not allowed to record. So if you have a recording device on, why are you so worried about being recorded? Hey, Mr. Rupp, you're not going to do this today. Do what? I'm asking Mr. Rupp, a question. Mr. Rupp, not today. I don't give a speak. Mr. Rupp, don't push me today. Please. If you have a recording device on, you need to shut it off. The rule is clear for anybody else in the courtroom. We need to receive a request or notice. The court is not receiving any notice from anybody regarding personal recording. That's what the rule calls for. So I'm directing any of you who are recording, please shut your recording devices off pursuant to the rule. If you are recording pursuant to the rule, since there's been no request or notice made to the court or my staff, I checked with my staff before I took the bench. So I'm asking you all to please do that. If you're caught recording, you'll be asked to leave the courthouse. Mr. Ruff, let me go ahead and address just some of your motions because there were some notices and I don't want to not address them since you did file them. <clears throat> there was a notice to the court which was filed on, looks like June 6th. There was a motion, Mr. Ruff, that you had filed an emergency procedural motion to refer to the Superior Court for a normal inspection of records, emergency stay of proceedings, request for court-appointed counsel. Um, I guess you, you were filing that under, under Rule 8 of the Superior Court Rules of Criminal Appellate Procedure, so this is something that is intended for the Superior Court to address. But let me go ahead and just address your notice to the court. I know, Mr. Ruff, that you had indicated in your, in your notice that you had never received a proper record 
to do the appeal. So what I wanted to do, Mr. Roth, is just briefly go over, because I wanted to look over your cases and just make a, make a, a record so that it is clear. In the four cases, Mr. Roth, where you um, were found guilty and sentenced, you had, in three of the cases initially, in, and I'll just, I'll reference those cases, there was case 2021-071040, and case 2021-048968, and 2021-043799, there was a court-appointed attorney appointed in that case in December of 2021. A lawyer had filed a motion to withdraw, um, then you had retained the services of a private firm by the name of Mays Tellus. They had filed a notice of appearance in January. And they were representing you in all four of the cases. On the three that went to trial on May 26th of 2022, in fact, two, you didn't have one attorney. You actually had two private attorneys here from that firm representing you. And what I wanted to make clear for the record, Mr. Ruff, is in these cases, there were no pretrial motions, there were no evidentiary hearings, there were no oral arguments on any motions uh, because no motions had been filed. The only motion that had been filed in any of those three cases, whether there was one motion um, for a deposition of an officer when the interview had not been conducted. However, that motion was deemed mute by your counsel because the interview later took place. So just for the record, there were no pre-trial motions. There were no evidentiary hearings. And so the only issue uh, was then was the trial. The trial took place on May 26th in those three cases. You had private counsel. Like I said, you actually had two attorneys. Those That firm had filed a motion to withdraw then after those trials due to irreconcilable differences with you, Mr. Ruff. Um, and then after the sentencing, uh, they were allowed to withdraw. The other case, which was set for trial in August, uh, again, you did have the Mays Tellus firm. However, their request to withdraw was granted and then you represented yourself in that matter. But prior to that time, there had been no contested motions. There had been no evidentiary hearings. There had been no oral arguments on anything pre-trial. So the only thing, Mr. Ruff, that uh, was going to be appealed in this matter was obviously what occurred during trial or what you may have disagreed with during trial and what you may have disagreed with in terms of the sentence that you received. And according to your notice to the court, Mr. Ruff, I noticed that you simply referred to Rule 7C regarding items that you believe that you didn't have to do your appeal. However, you had everything to do your appeal. 7C refers to items that the clerk then has to transmit to the Superior Court once the appeal is perfected. The appeal is perfected, Mr. Ruff, once a memorandum is properly filed, then the clerk merely sends those. Let me go over those items. Those items are a notice of appeal, Mr. Ruff, which you had because you're the one who filed the notice of appeal, so you obviously had your own notice that you filed. There was, there's what's called a docket or list of events, and that's just where the clerk merely prints out the list of, of things that occurred. Um, that's that's under, under uh, C2. There is a documentation of record of payment. So if there's any fines, restitution, or bond that you had paid, that's simply they send notice that you paid those. However, there was no bond in any of your cases. No fine had been paid, nor was there any restitution paid. It says that the charging document has to be sent to the, to the court. Obviously, you and your attorney from day one always had the charging documents. You knew what you were charged with. You had the complaints. You've always had those, those matters. Uh, under item five, it says disposition or judgment or sentence. Obviously, Mr. Ruff, when you were sentenced, there was a, that, that matter was recorded. There was a transcript of those proceedings. Um, also, you received the judgment and sentence. You were given that the day that you were sentenced. So you had that item as well. And then it says six, the order of judgment or ruling that is the subject of the appeal. The ruling or subject of the appeal would have been your sentence that I imposed, which you had fully and the transcript, as well as the trial transcripts. You had those items. Item seven, any written motions, responses, or replies. We've already gone through that. There were no contested pretrial motions. There were no contested pretrial issues in your case. 
There were none filed by you. There were none filed by your defense counsel, including your private defense attorneys, that private firm that you had retained. Any exhibits, which obviously the parties had, and then it says the recordings are certified transcripts of the trial and the sentencing order, which you had. And the last, if designated for inclusion by a party, oral argument on motions, voluntariness, suppression hearings, aggravated or mitigation hearings. Again, most of those things just did not occur in your case. Those things were absent. So you had all the documents, Mr. Mr. Rupp, you had more than uh, more time than most individuals in this entire city of Mesa are ever afforded to do an appeal. Uh, Judge Tatz uh, <coughs> denied your motion for stay. Uh, Judge Tatz uh, found that you abandoned your appeal because he gave you yet another extension of time. And since you did not file that uh, memorandum, he felt that your appeal was banned abandoned. So the only thing I can do this afternoon, the only thing legally I can do is to reimpose sentence. I have nothing else that I can do at this time. So I just wanted to make the record clear for that. And I did notice, Mr. Rupp, that- So do I get to speak now and make the record clear for my behalf too? Mr. Rupp, I'm, I'm gonna go through this and then- And, and then, then I don't get to speak later. Okay, Mr. Rupp, let, let me just finish this. And the motion that you filed or the emergency procedural motion where you have a request and a reference for many things under under 8C. That's okay. something you rule on that goes to the Superior Court. Mr. Ruff, I understand that, sir. Mr. Mr. Ruff, let me, let, let me finish, Mr. Ruff. It says under Rule of 8C1, procedural motions are motions that may determine, one, whether the appeal should go forward. Procedural motions include motions to dismiss where there is no right to an appeal. That doesn't apply. Appeals from guilty pleas, you didn't plead guilty. Appeals that are not timely filed, you timely filed your appeal. And motions to dismiss or motions to strike. Procedural motions may be made at any time after the filing of the notice of appeal and set forth therein. So they specifically say what issues apply to those motions. Again, that's going to be for the Superior Court, but the request you made clearly fall outside this rule. And so, so the only thing I can do, Mr. Ruff, today, the only thing I can do legally as this court is to, since Judge Tatz found that you abandoned your appeal, the only thing I can do is I have to reimpose sentence by law. There's nothing else legally that I can do. So, Mr. Ruff, I don't, if you want to address that, you can. I filed a procedural motion and the rules, everything that happens in this court is frozen until the Superior Court makes a decision on the procedural motion. Yes, it is. Respectfully, I'm going to respectfully disagree. You can just disagree on what the rules are. You were found to have abandoned your appeal. There is no appeal pending. You filed a special action. The court, the Superior Court denied your special action. One of them. I understand, Mr. Ruff. So at this point, there's no stay in this court. There's been no request for a stay. There's been no stay ordered by the Superior Court or a higher court. The only thing I can do now is reimpose. Anything else you want to tell me? So you say that I don't need any of the things in 7C that that doesn't apply to. The Rule 8 on how you write the memorandum is supposed to write a reference to the record. The record is defined in the previous rule, Rule 7C. A list of events is every time that I've had to come into court. If I need the transcript from one of those events from the time that we were in court where you admitted to watching my YouTube channel and I want to appeal based on that, I need the transcripts from that, which means I need a list of events so I can get the transcripts to base my appeal on that. Why would you send 7C to the Superior Court without giving it to me and then send them my memorandum? They haven't been watching this case. They need to be able to reference the record to make sure that my memorandum was written correctly. That means I need all the information from Rule 7C. You guys have misinterpreted the rules. I'm not done talking. Do I have a right to be heard? Okay. Do I have a right to be heard? I'm, I'm trying to be heard right now. Okay, Mr. Ruff? I guess not. Okay. All right. I just went through 7C. And you misinterpreted it again, right? I didn't buy it. That's your opinion, Mr. Ruff. Not just for law, okay. but whatever. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Ruff? Absolutely. 
I would like to point out that Judge Schumacher had all the rules in front of him and were reading the rules off of a piece of paper. Direct D didn't have any papers in front of him and had the rules memorized. And to everybody in the courtroom, it really made Schumacher look... I object to everything that you're doing. I object to your unlawfulness, your constitutional violations. Case number 2021-043-799, pursuant to the finding of the court, the finding of um, entering a judgment of guilt previously for the offense of criminal trespass as a class three misdemeanor. You were found guilty in that case. Uh, the court imposed five days of jail. The court's reimposing that same jail time. What about all the time That's I was in straight, jail when I was arrested? That's straight time, no two for one. That jail is concurrent with docket number 2021-063-564. What about all the time I was spent in jail when I was arrested for these cases? Did that just go away? Nobody counts that? Uh, Mr. Ruff, that's that's my ruling. That you're going to do five days, okay, sir? That was my ruling previously. I'm really what about all the time I did in jail already, Mr. Ruff? I'm giving you five days, days together, jail. sir. In the case of 2021-071-040, pursuant to the finding of guilt in that case, and you previously imposed that as to um, count one, the disorderly conduct, three years of probation, 180 days of jail. All 180 days are suspended. As to count two, the trespassing charge, you were found guilty of is that as well for that offense. You were placed on 12 months probation with 30 days suspended jail upon completion of counseling and probation. The court did order counseling in that case. The court ordered that you contact Prodigy Healthcare within two business days to get set up on a training and counseling for aid anger management, we will give you that directive. As a term and condition of your probation, you shall not go to the areas where the Mesa Police Department are conducting an investigation. You shall not record any members of the Mesa Police Department while you are on probation. Case of 2021-063564, pursuant to uh, you being found guilty in that matter, the charge of criminal trespass is a class three misdemeanor. You're placed on 12 months of probation, five days in jail. While you're on probation, you are not to return to the Mesa City Plaza. Those five five days in jail will be concurrent with the jail time of 2021-043-799. Last case, case number 2021-048-968. You were found guilty of uh, failing, failing to obey a police officer. You're given 24 months of probation, 90 days jail. All 90 days are suspended. Counseling was ordered in that case, sir. Again, you were directed to contact Prodigy Healthcare within two business days to get set up on that screening and counseling for anger management. And in that case is what I did now, but you shall not go to the areas where the Mesa Police Department are conducting an investigation. You shall not report any members of the Mesa Police Department while you are on probation. Mr. Roth, I will have my clerk come in in a minute and will provide you with those sentencing documents. Mr. Ruff, regarding your five days of jail, sir, I'm going to give you up to 30 days for you to pick a day that you would self surrender. Do you have a date in mind, Mr. Ruff? No. 30 days from now. You have up to 30 days. And then mark it on the 30th day. But I object to going to jail and the sentencing and everything that you're saying. Erroneous, illegal, and unlawful. All right, Mr. Ruff, do you, what time do you want to go in? I'll, I'll give you up until July 21st. What time do you want to go in on the 21st? Midnight. I'm not going to have you go in at midnight, sir. I don't want to there to be any conflicts. You can go in between. I'll have you go in between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. What time do you want to go in between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m.? 
Hey, man. I love your talk about the night before. I'll need to sleep the rest of the year. Um, love you, self surrender in July 21st. At 8 a.m. My sons, if you could witness your terrorism, you know, say hi to my son over there. And my other baby brewing in the, in the belly next to him. Okay, so after that, the judge sat there for about 10 minutes looking through paperwork and writing on paperwork. There was nothing said. And after about 10 minutes, Direct D told him, you got about five more minutes and I'm going to get up and walk out. And then the judge didn't say anything. And then after a minute or two went by, the judge actually got up and walked out. He didn't say anything. I'm going to cut all the dead. You got about five more minutes until I leave. So like I said a minute ago, after Direct D said that, the judge sat around for a few more minutes, doing nothing, looking at paperwork, and then the judge got out and walked out. And then Direct D turned his chair around and addressed everybody who was in the courtroom, which, by the way, everybody that was in the courtroom was there to support him. There was probably 15 to 20 people there. I can't remember the exact number. But I'm going to cut all the dead time out, and then after he addressed everybody, he waited a little bit more for the judge, and then he got up. Thank you. 